Introducing the all-new Yemma Superman Skin Diver Limited Edition, a bewitching unique diver from France that manages to separate itself in this crowded dive watch segment. It's going to be limited to 1,000 units and it's going to come in at 1,249 USD. Is it worth it? Well, in this video, I'm going to try and figure that one out. Let's check it out. Yemma was created 74 years ago, 1948, by Henry Louis Belmont, a French watchmaker. He had a dream of the name Yemma becoming associated with fine French watchmaking. And when I think French watchmaking, I do think Yemma. The brand has fantastic history. They've been to space and they do make their own in-house calibers. So the Superman has history and that is a big bonus in my book. I love a watch with heritage. And as you can tell, this one looks absolutely stunning. The case is completely brushed and it has a dynamic look to it. Many layers because of that ultra thin mid case and that top hat bezel, with the coin edge at the top and a boxed sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating. And then you can see the case back sticking out. So there's a lot of layers here and you know what? The case is very straight. The original, I believe, had a little bit more of a down curve. They said they did use a 3D modeling and scans of the original to recreate this, but it's not exactly the same. The original had a bevel on the lugs and I believe downturned a bit more than this. This one is the larger one. It does come in a smaller size. I don't have the smaller size, but I have my Yemma, which is smaller. And just to show you guys real quick, the 39 versus the 41. All right. You can see the wingspans of both sizes. You can get the limited in 39 if you have a smaller wrist. And I believe they're going to make 1000 of both. So 1039 mils, 1041 mils. So really it's limited to 2000. That's how I understood it anyways. Let's do the measurements. I got 41.1 in diameter. I got a thickness of 13.2 and a lug to lug of 49.5 with drilled lugs for easy strap changes. Look at that relatively flat case. When I wear my Yemma Superman, the watch has tons of swag on the wrist, the way it hangs. It's just, I don't know if you can get that kind of a feel on any watch. Maybe a vintage Submariner, you can get that feel, but uh, that's special. The watch is absolutely gonna find its way into your heart the longer you own it. It has that my watch capability of being your watch, if that makes any sense. Like that one watch that you, you just wear, it has it, all right? It doesn't give me like the highest impression of quality when I'm holding it, more of a vintage feel. Um, I guess the best way to describe it is like when I'm holding like the Longines Spirit. Okay, so that one gives me such a high impression of quality. There's just a different, let me use a French word because this is French, je ne sais quoi about it. Okay, but doesn't mean that this is not great. This is great. The bracelet has the legendary Yema scales back from the original 20 mil down to 18 solid end links, solid links, push pins for micro adjust fold over signed with the number 63 on that clasp. It is a friction fit. It doesn't feel very refined. It is fully milled and a dive extension. Now Yemma's trademark dive watch feature is this mechanism on the crown. It hooks into the coin edge bezel teeth. So once you set it, it will not be knocked around. So it's the most secure locking mechanism for dive watches. The signed crown at 6.5 mil is easy to operate and it gives the Yemma, just like the original, 300 meters of water resistance. Now to turn that sapphire bezel insert, so it's steel covered with sapphire, giving it that shine, you have to unscrew the crown. You don't have to unscrew the crown fully. You can get away with one or two turns and then you'll be able to turn the bezel. Let's have a listen.
The bezel is clicky, tactile, and direct. Not very refined feeling, but it gets the job done. The clamp gets a little loose while it's unscrewed, but the only way it comes off is if you take the crown out of the watch. Because it is still a unidirectional bezel, it doesn't really need the clamp unless it gets hit forward. The dial is inky black and absolutely gorgeous, like a black hole, and the high contrast with the faux patina Old Radium Super Luminova just looks beautiful. Trapezoidal shaped indices with Arabics at the cardinals except where the date is. Baton hour hand, arrow tip minute hand, and lollipop second hand. Very close to the original, but the original had a second hand with a rectangular loom plot. This one lollipop and I think it looks much better. I would like to see this in a no date. I know it won't be accurate to the original, but this is a recreation, so we can always be liberal. The case is not one to one, it doesn't have the bevels. Anyways, sized up for my six and a half inch wrist, 137. Perfect weight for all day comfort, but heavy enough to know it's there. Yema did spend 3 million euros and four years to make their own in house calibers. This one uses the SW. 200 from Salida based on the ETA 28A VPH 26 joules hack hand wine automatic 38 hours of power reserve and look at these numbers wow no error let's ignore the first number so we'll do four rounds two three three in the fourth and final round two wow look at that amplitude okay 12 down now to see the positional variance how it's going to react on our wrists my Superman, by the way, with the same movement on my wrist is doing five seconds a day. And wow, no error. OK, right when I said that <laughs> it went up 0.1 error. Amplitude is still strong. Wow. Let's do five rounds. Why not? One, three, one, one and the fourth. I mean, fifth and final round zero. Nice. There is the Loom C3 Super Luminova. Even with the faux patina, it's pretty good. Wow. And look at that distortion with that boxed sapphire and the Loom. Oh, man. Gorgeous. So not as strong as C3 X1, but still pretty decent. What competition does the Superman have? I think the main competitor is the 63 mass from Seiko at 1200, basically the same price. The 63 mass, a remake of a 1965 watch. This one, 1963. We also have the Oris Diver 65. But that's about a thousand or 1100 more than this with the same movement. So when I say something like that, then you start to realize, hmm, maybe the Yema is pretty good value. If you are craving a vintage diver, the Superman will definitely quench that hunger it remains a skin diver. So it's the everyman diver. And that's what this watch feels like. The everyday man's diver, even though it's very capable at 300 meters, it was always intended for the masses. And it's such a gorgeous, unique look with the layered case and the clamp bezel mechanism scaled bracelet. And of course, the beautiful vintage dial. I think it's definitely worth the cost of admission. And when I compare it to the Oris, it makes more sense. Against the Seiko, it's a little bit more tough. Maybe I should do a battle between them. <laughs> I think this one will win though. I don't know. This one has a lot of X factor, guys. It's uh, it's so charming. If you made it this far, please remember to subscribe. And if you want more Yemma goodness, check out the Kavinsky review that should be on your screen right now. And I'll see you in the next one.